Okay, so let's look at where these practice files are, where to find them, and then how to start on them. Okay, so you're going to go to your OneNote, either in OneNote or Teams, I'll do the same thing. Open that up. I've created one, so it's in the uh, content library. If you go down, there's one called Fusion 360 Notes. If you go into that, there's the first page there is the page around uh, downloading or renewing your Fusion 360. So hopefully you've already seen that already. Underneath that, we've got uh, one called Formative 5 Practice Parts. <clears throat> And in there, we've got Fusion 360, the basics. So there is the how to set up Fusion and create the project folder that you're going to be saving these projects into. It only goes for a couple of minutes, so watch that. Take a screenshot of your dialog box, pop that in the box that is there. Modeling. Uh, I've got some tutorials underneath this that's not going to be called uh, Packing Block. We're going to do something different here. So we've got these Fusion 360 files, practice files that we're going to work through. And then we're going to maybe get to the technical drawings at the end of this, but let's see how we go. So if we scroll down, uh, these drawings, I have uh, borrowed those from mechatheart.com. So thank you very much. <clears throat> Our first part is this one here. So this is what we're going to be drawing. And we're going to have a crack at that. A uh, big tip here is that this dot in the middle here, this little circle, you can see it's got an outer grey ring around it. That is probably going to be the origin point in the Fusion, which I'll show you in a sec. Uh, so use that as a good reference point to build from there outwards to do the rest of what you were doing. Okay, so let's just drag this out the road so we can see our screen. Okay, so one screen, you can't, you, you can't, you can only see the one. I've got Fusion on. On my second screen, I've got that drawing that we're going to be working from. Oh, I wonder if I could do it half by half. Let's have a quick squeeze this and go like this go like this I'm not going to be able to see enough that's the issue thinking 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 I'm not going to do what I want hang on a minute let's try going into that okay let's bring this over pop that up there bring that over oops see what I can there we go that'll do okay so we got both on this one screen now you'll be able to see everything that's going on <coughs> So if we go up to the create new sketch box here. Now, one thing I really like uh, working with is to have our Z axis uh, going vertically up upwards. Uh, that represents a lot of machinery that we have in terms of 3D printers and everything else will work with the Z axis pointing up. So if yours is not pointing up, uh, just quickly as a setup thing, go into your preferences. Uh, and you should only have to do this once and then It'll be good to go. Uh, on the first screen that opens up, it says default modeling orientation uh, Z up. And so yours might be Y up, uh, but I, I really like and encourage you to go with the Z up thing. So change it to that if it isn't already. Hit apply and go OK, and then you're good to go. OK, jumping back into that, we're going to work then on our plane that is here, which is our XY plane. Uh, the reason being that then that looks as if we were going to go upwards from that so we could look like a top-down version so if we click on that it'll open up our paper there and you can see that point there in the middle is our origin point it has a little gray ring around it as what we were doing before so if we look at a drawing the first thing that we've got there is a almost circle and we've got a symbol there in front of the 70 that means it is a diameter so there is a diameter there of 70 for that circle we've got r for radius at the top there uh, a 45 degree after the side and then the rest of them are all standard measurements so let's get our circle tool or you can press c on the keyboard click in the middle drag your mouse away and you can see that you have a dimension in there you can literally just type in now the number 70 press enter and there is your 70 
millimeter circle that you've got there. Now from that we've got some other lines that we need to do. We don't know what the uh, length of this line here is or the length of this line here. But we do know that this horizontal line is sitting 100 millimeters away from that middle. So what we're going to do is we are just literally going to trace up like that. And we're going to draw a line. Make sure that it is um, horizontal. Draw a line out from that. doesn't matter in terms of length at the moment. You're just going out. So we'll go to that point there. Hit the OK button. OK, we need to do some definitions here now. So we're going to get our sketch dimension, or you can press the letter D on the keyboard, D for dimension. Click on our line, click on our point there, and bring that out, and you can see that it gives us the dimension. So we know that's going to be 100, so let's type 100 in there, and press OK. So we've now got our circle, we've got this horizontal line. We can leave that as it is for the moment. We do have another horizontal line up here. We'll do that in a second, I think. We're going to go with the angled one. Okay, so I'm going to click off to the side, click on our point there, and we're just going to drag that up like that. And just draw there, that's okay. Okay, again, we're going to dimension that by going to D for dimension. Put in there, we want an angle of 45 degrees. Okay, so we've got two of those values now set. Okay, now we're going to try and do this other horizontal line here, which is at 200 millimeters. So let's start at, say, that point there. We're going to go this way. You can see that little blue thing uh, just above the word next. That represents that it's a horizontal constraints being applied to that line. That's a good thing. Um, so just bringing that out. Doesn't matter about the length as such at the moment. We'll work on that. Again, go back to your dimension tool from there to the bottom. Geez, that wasn't bad for a stab in the dart, was it? Eh? 200 on the money. <clears throat> okay, so we've got two of our lines. Now we've got a vertical line here that is 100 millimeters from that point there. But we don't know where that point is there because that's actually not giving us much to reference from all right let's see how we go we are going to draw a line from here it's going to go straight up so you can see it's <coughs> got the 90 degree symbol there so we're just going to bring that up we're going to type in 50. okay so this endpoint here is where this needs to meet up and that's where we're going to come back and finish that off in a second. So we know the length of this. It can't be any more than what it is. That's got to be fixed. What we can do is extend this line here out. So we're going to go extend. Click that. And you can see that it's gone past that. So now we are going to constrain this line by saying we want that to be constrained to that line. And did it do what I think it just did? I think it did, but that's okay. Okay, we're going to trim off that end. That's okay, we can do that. We're going to trim away that. That's okay, we can do that. <coughs> Excuse me. We've still got our angle. We've still got our 50. We need to add a dimension in here to say that the distance between this end point here and that line there is 100. So let's bring that out. Okay, so that's fully constrained. We've still got our constraint there as well <clears throat> okay we're going to draw a straight line from there down again we don't know length or anything as yet so we're just going to do that as that now at the moment you can see that we've got uh, some lines that are blue some that are uh, black black lines are basically sort of fully constrained lines and blue ones aren't so you can see that I can still move this around in uh, certain things so this black line down here, there's no length applied to it, so that's why it's getting smaller or bigger. Uh, but like this one here, for example, I can't move that up and down because it's got the 50 and it's defined. I can't move that one as well. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> the next one that we're going to try and do, I think, is that we're going to 
create like a rectangle in this space here. I actually know we won't. Let's try doing this arc. We're going to go, let's see if we can work this out. We're going to go arc and center point arc using three points. Let's try this. So if we say that's that there, the center point of it. So if our arc is um, the radius of 20, okay, we could say that that's the center point of it there. We're going to come up. 20 mils and so that's our start point and then we're going to come around 90 degrees and that's our end point so we've drawn a quarter circle there with a radius of um, 20 in there we can delete should be able to trim out that part there so then our line is coming down and across that is our arc <coughs> okay we're almost there. Last one I'm going to try and do is a rectangle in the middle of this. So I'm going to go just go okay because basically what we're going to try and do is we're going to try and shift this over so it sort of sits about there somewhere. So I'm going to draw a rectangle in here and I'm going to center that rectangle against our origin point with a. Um, oh, actually, don't even have to do that. A 20 mil line across from that. So let's go from here. We're going to bring this down till it hits the circle. Right, so we'll just go just past it so we don't, look, don't, don't want it constraining to that. Now we want to do a constraint between, oh, that represents the vertical constraint. Let's do a constraint between there to the middle. And we want this to be 20. Okay, so now we've got that right. We've got our 20 mil uh, dimension there should be good. Looks a bit flat though. Not sure why that's looking flat. I think our arc has changed where our center point was. That's okay, we'll fix that in a sec. Okay, we'll come back and do the other one of these. So let's do another line over here from that point down. Again, make sure that it is 90 degrees there and or uh, the vertical constraint. We can do a constraint between there to there now because we know that that's going to be 40. So line that up. Okay, we're going to trim out some work here. So we're going to trim out the bit of that circle, bit of that bottom line and that line there. We can get rid of that line there. <coughs> Excuse me. So we've almost got all of our items constrained into the right measurements. We've just got to fix up this thing here which is not quite correct because if I go, whoops, if I get out of this, okay, and move this, you can see that it changes that point. And we still haven't got uh, full constraint over this shape here. But we've applied all the dimensions and things like that that it's given to us. So the constraint I want to put on that is is it a tangent constraint between that to that? No. <clears throat> oh, I know what I can do. Uh, we can put a dimension in there that's not actually here. So if I go like that and like that, we know that the distance of... Oh, we don't even have to do that. Let's get out of that. Get our vertical constraint and line that line up with the vertical point that we've got. Uh, maybe we can't do it like should be able to line that. Oh, it's saying it's already in there now. Is it collinear? All right. Oh, there we go. Coincident. So we've got strapped that to that. Now that's fixed in place. You can see it's all gone black. Go OK. We can't move anything around. All of our geometry is now fixed bar this one down here. Not quite sure why that's not fully constrained anymore, considering it should be all tied to everything. 
Ah, <coughs> that's why. Because we haven't got a length on that line there. So I'm going to assume that this point here is the same height as that one there. If we were looking at that thing, so we're going to make an assumption here. Normally you shouldn't do that. Let's go see where we go. Can work? No, we want that one. That to be that. There we go. Now we've got all constrained. And it looks pretty much like our shape that we've got. So that is how you do a sketch. Bit, bit of a long winded one. Um, but we got, got there in the end. So we've had to make a couple of assumptions and we had to make some educated guesses uh, based on the information that we sort of knew. Um, if it's got an arc with a start point that's there, it's got to have an end point there. And that end point has to, well, it doesn't have to, but we are assuming that that's lining up with the one that's across there. Outside of that, we pretty much did everything else with the information that we had. So follow that along. And what you could do is go finish sketch. There's our shape. And we want to save that now. So remember the folder that we've created earlier. We go save. <coughs> if your folder doesn't come up in here, click on the little black arrow. Uh, scroll down until you find your year nine. Where is it? Year nine practice parts folder. If you haven't got one, go create a new project and call create a project called that. Uh, select that. Once you've selected it, hit save, and it will save inside of that. Uh, there's no need to extrude that into a three-dimensional shape, but if you wanted to, you could then extrude that. Uh, I'm just going to do the default thing for the moment. Let's say it's going to have a distance of five millimeters. Go OK, and there is our three-dimensional shape. And that's it. So in the um, parts, there are different parts. They get harder as we go down through them. So work on that one and see how you get on with the next ones. Thanks for watching.